Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Deatherock, and I thought I'd do a shorter style video on Black Myth Wukong today. The goal here is to recap chapter one, which I found out after finishing chapter one that it is titled Black Cloud Red Fire. And I kind of want to break down some of the story elements that aren't presented that well uh, to the player. So uh, let's get into it. We kick off with the prologue where we have Sun Wukong facing off against a pantheon of gods. We're thrust straight into the action without much context or warning. So in short, Sun Wukong has likely completed his quote unquote journey to the west and has attained immortality and buddhahood. He and some companions would have headed out on your classic hero adventure in a generally westward direction. When I say west, no, they did not travel to America. They hit up India with a monk named Shan Zang. The goal of this journey was to retrieve Buddhist scriptures and return them to China to spread the teachings. Upon completion of his mission, our boy Sun Wukong would have achieved godhood and immortality. Now, Sun Wukong is absolutely not a team player. He does not want to be bound by the rules of the supposed heaven and the gods who rule. Uh, he's not down with management at all, and the conversations around the water cooler have been a little stale of late. Sun Wukong challenges the heavenly army, thus giving up his Buddhahood. He cites that they have committed the atrocity of killing his kind, and he is not one to sit by and allow this act of prejudice. An epic battle ensues and it results in the reappearing of Wukong's headband. This headband should have been destroyed when he ascended, yet it has made a badly timed appearance and weakens him severely. This allows Erlang Shen to strike him down into his mountain. Now, the game doesn't quite tell us if Wukong is alive or dead, but it shows us this rock, okay? That may or may not be housing his physical form. We are told by the village elder that Wukong's spirit has been shattered into six relics and we've got to get busy trying to find them all. Interestingly, and not something I was aware of when starting the game. You don't actually play as Sun Wukong. You play as the destined one. Why is he destined? Well, from what we see in chapter one, everyone mistakes him for Wukong. He kind of gives off an aura that screams immortal Buddha Monkey King. Maybe he is actually Wukong and we need to just go about collecting all six relics to reawaken his spirit. Only time will tell. Off we go now through Guanyin Temple. Our goal is the first relic of Sun Wukong. We start off feeling quite peachy and pick a fight with some Yao Guai. The definition of Yao Guai, according to the Googles, is any non-human who possesses magic and has long life. This is a very unfriendly bunch who try to kill you around every corner. As you make your way up the mountain and towards the temple, you're greeted by a very peculiar being known as the Keeper, or 2D in the original translation. He is a guardian deity of soil and ground. He guides you along and empowers you by teaching you spells, often hinting at the fact that you should remember this, implying that you may have walked this path before, potentially in the past, or maybe even as Sun Wukong himself. After you've made your way through some of the earlier woodsy areas and have learned how to become a cicada, you'll come across a clearing with a peculiar creature. This is the Wandering White, otherwise known as the Monk Jinchi, or at least half of Jinchi's resurrected form. See, as a young monk of the Guanyin Temple, Jinchi happened across the Black Wind King, a ferocious looking black bear Yao Guai. He and the black bear became homies, and Jinchi learned the secrets of longevity, thus blessing him with an unnaturally long life of over 200 years. With his newfound sage wisdom, he worked his way up the ranks and eventually took his position as Elder Jinchi. As we all know, however, an ascent to power by unnatural and inauthentic means usually results in a fall from grace. Elder Jinshi developed an obsession with collecting kasayas, the sacred robes that are worn by the monks. He collected a metric ass ton of those things. It was like an all-consuming fire for him. In the monk's latter years, he would be visited by a monk and his companions on a pilgrimage. Jinshi would behold the finest kasaya he had ever seen being worn by said monk. This was none other than Shan Zhang. This robe had been bestowed to him by Buddha himself, thus making it a one-of-a-kind piece that drove Jinshi to the peak of obsession. Driven by his less than stellar motives, he hatched a plan with two Yao Guais that were his students. 
Guangxi and Guangmo. The plan here was to steal the Kasaya and set fire to Zhang Zhang's quarters. However, Sun Wukong was doing the Lord's work here and saw through their deception. He used his powers to control the fire, save Zhang Zhang, and ultimately kill many monks who resided in the temple. Elder Jinshi took his own life by slamming his head into a wall. Good times. We can see this even in his signature attack when we encounter him in the temple. So his big black bear bestie sees the fire from his mountain and takes a quick jog over to the temple to see what's cooking. He finds Jinshi dead and that was not a vibe for him. He somehow manages to steal away Zhang Zhang's Kasaya and beats a hasty retreat to Guanyin in this time from an aggressive son Wukong who tried to stop him. Guanyin who, according to Chinese mythology, is the goddess of mercy and compassion, also known as a bodhisattva, or as I've read in a few places, they've even called her the female son Wukong, although I'm not really sure how accurate that is. The black bear's friend, Ling Sucha, had come to visit his old pal with some Tai pills. However, Wukong and Guanyin intercepted the white wolf and killed him. Guanyin turned into the wolf and tricked the bear, while Wukong became the pills, because he can change his shape, and the bear would swallow him. Wukong would proceed to wreck him from the inside and bring him to his knees. Guanyin would then take him to be disciplined for stealing the sacred kasaya that belonged to Shan Zhang. Upon Sang Wukong's defeat in the prologue, the black bear would seize control of one of the relics created from Wukong's spirit. He hoped that he could use its power to return the mountain and temple to its former glory. He started by resurrecting Ling Sucha and Elder Jinshi, or at least that kind of was his intention. His lack of magical understanding led to Jinshi being split into two beings. One is represented by the Golden Elder Jinshi, who is completely insane, and the hollow shell of a being known as the Blue Wandering White. The Black Bear, knowing that he made a bit of boo-boo, opted to lock the Elder Golden Jinshi away using the three bells that you ring while ascending the mountain. He had his lackeys, Guanzi and Guangmo, and the white-clad noble guard them so they would never be disturbed. Then we have the unfortunate case of Ling Sucha. He was broken upon his resurrection and required the blood of his own kind to sustain himself. Ultimately, he took his own life as he could not bear this kind of existence. To note, the Ling Sucha we face in-game is not the real Ling Sucha. This is a fake masquerading as Ling Sucha. After we finally defeat the black bear and take back the relic, he pleads with us to forgive him, stating that he was merely a pawn and following orders from heaven. Guanyin likely subdued him after he was disciplined and put him up to this task. This paints a bigger picture that the deities of this realm are constantly influencing events and are much more dangerous than any Yao Guai we've faced thus far. For our efforts up to this point, we are awarded the first relic of Wukong's spirit and lo and behold, it reacts to the destined one and joins itself to him. This brings chapter one to an epic conclusion. What do you think, guys? Do you agree with some of what I've said? If I've missed anything that you think I should have added, please drop it low in the comments. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more of yours truly. Appreciate you all. I'll see you in the next one.